And the, and the responses came in of like, whoa, actually, I this is really cool. People are asking me about it. It's my meditational tool. I use it three, four, five times a day. It helps me fall asleep at night. It helps me with my morning routine. It helps me with, you know, pre-Zoom, uh, you know, pre-meeting jitters, like to calm you down. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up, and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lunid. And today, you know, it's an honor to introduce another fella, Todd Steinberg. He is the president of Komuso. Get this, the first meditation accessory. Y'all, this is going to be uh, mind-blowing. It's a necklace concept that slows people's exhale to eight plus seconds. That is calming down the entire body and nervous system and this is unheard of the first of its kind and i'm really excited to have the um president on here to tell us all about it and you know it was inspired by the by 17th century um japanese monks and engineered to quiet you know the busy mind the chatter all that we have going on and to relieve anxiety um in the most the most natural way so with no further ado todd welcome to the show Oh, so glad to be here. And I actually wanted to introduce myself as something that I'm not. I am not a doctor, a scientist, a wellness practitioner, guru, monk, none of these things. But I just so happened to have stumbled on a really practical, easy solution that changed my life the second it happened to me. So I'm just, anytime I can share uh, my story and especially about what breathing can do for you. I'm happy to do it. I want to scream it from the rooftops. <laughs> yeah. And so this tool attains, it helps attain peace of mind. Are you wearing right now? Is that is that what's around your neck? Yeah. So this is called the shift. It shifts your breath to shift your mind. And it actually started all from uh, me being stressed out. Uh, I, I consider myself actually a pretty calm person, but that's when I learned about what's called high functioning anxiety. And you know, when you're kind of like looking through the symptoms of something and it's like, oh, wow, like I have like nine of 10 symptoms. And it was just someone that is able to be highly functional. You know, I've always owned a business. Um, I enjoy a pretty fast paced lifestyle, but I was always proud of one thing. And that was I have a very high processor. I'm always able to think through things and, you know, I'm, my mind's always going thought that was a strength, which it still kind of is, but unless you learn to manage it, it can kind of get in the way and be counterproductive. So I learned that because I was carrying around this stress and it was manifesting into physical symptoms, you know, like hair loss and my stomach was hurting and I was, you know, had rashes. There's always things that were happening that were interrupting my life and nothing too bad, but it was just always kind of there. So I'm sitting with a friend who's a therapist and he's like, Hey man, I really wanted to teach you meditation. And I was like, look, I respect it. I know it works, but I've tried, I've done the app, the Headspace Calm, all these different apps. And they're really cool. It works when you're using it, you know, yeah. nights a week, whatever it is. But nothing was like habitual. Nothing was every day. And it was like, cool that I can get like a shot of calm once in a while, but I need something more sustainable. So he's like, well, look, man, like it really boils down to breathing. And if you could just breathe better, then you're going to feel better. And I was like, okay, like shaking my head, like nodding my head. Okay, that sounds believable. But uh, he said, well, look, just to prove it to you, here's a straw. He just so happened to have this like Dunkin' Donuts uh, coffee next to him. And I, he said, I know it's going to sound weird, but breathe through this straw for like a minute. So I breathed through the straw and within 15, 20 seconds, I could feel my heart rate coming down. I felt lighter. My shoulders dropped. I just felt this physiological change immediately it was like what is happening so that's when this ages old straw breathing concept was uh was born and i looked it up i googled it it's like there's got to be some meditational tools out there that i can buy nothing existed i couldn't believe it so it's like all right this is a product and i'm going to use it so created a necklace out of it and you know tested it through his patients for the ideal exhale we use you know stainless steel high grade medical grade so it lasts forever we bake precious metal colors through it but it works because you wear it and because you wear it, you use it. So, you know, it develops the habit of breathing better to feel better. 
Yeah, the simplicity of it is beautiful, isn't it? Like you, it's essentially you, you're able to look at that straw and take it from that idea and says, you know, let me design something instead of like um, you, your keychain. You know, you, you want to step further in the whole process of uh, making it easier to use, putting around your neck. You can just grab it and, and, and blow into it essentially to, to get the benefits that that's, that's genius. Yeah, I mean, look, it's like, think about your day. Think about, I mean, I love that this is the morning routine podcast. Like I always talk about morning routines and the first thing I used to do and the first thing that probably everyone does is in the morning, you check your phone. That's what your eyes open, not even a second later, it's what's going on, what did I miss? And the brain is launched into 40 notifications, some of which are not good news, right? So you're just launching your day into stress. It's like, is that good for you? So might as well reach for this and just breathe, breathe consciously and not just breathe, but use a breathing technique. I mean, this is a breathing technique called the physiological side that's been researched by Andrew Huberman at, at, you know, Stanford labs, who has said that that is the most effective technique to be calm because it's doing two things. It's extending your exhale, which is obviously uh, triggering the vagus nerve to calm you down. And then the neuroplasticity of doing that every day is going to make it better. And then you're inflating your lungs by breathing in so hard that the alveoli sacs get filled up and release all these toxins. Is all this happening with just breathing, right? So in your morning routine, you're going to breathe better to enter your day. It's going to make you make better choices, right? Because you're in a calm state. You're in a state where you're not already kind of like fluxed. Ever like wake up next to your partner or like, in the morning at breakfast, you're like, oh, you're already kind of in a mood. It's like, yeah, because you probably woke up to those notifications that kind of like, you know, bench you in the wrong way. And then throughout your day, let's face it, you know, that bus is never late. Stress is coming. Yeah. It's always there. Don't let it catch you off guard. And if you can breathe through it and not just take a deep breath, but actually take a series of four to five breaths that actually are measured and are designed to help you feel better you're going to be able to change your state of mind. And what's amazing about that is you can't control how you think, right? It's just so hard, 50,000 thoughts per day. But when you couple that with the 23,000 breaths you take, you can change your breath, not hard. So if you can change your breath, that can change your state of mind. So you actually do have more control over how you feel. You just don't realize it because breathing is part of the autonomic nervous system. It's offline so our theory is if you can bring more of those breaths online, you know, those 23,000 breaths or 23,000 opportunities to feel better. And while that's, you know, kind of poetic, it's real. It's just real science. Yeah. We didn't mess up. Like I didn't, that's why I say at the top of this, I'm not a scientist, doctor, neurologist. Like I just took something that already exists and made it online. They <laughs> like made it kind of permanent in your life, made it physical, like an anchor around your neck so that you're actually doing it. And because you're yeah. doing it, you feel better. And if you feel what's, better, your life changes. <laughs> what's the so. response to it? Because you did do the research and found that there was nothing out there and on the market. What were, were people asking for it? Were people seeking for such a device? And what's the response to it? Great question. So at first, the response was, you've got to be kidding me. Like this is, you're, try, you're trying to sell a straw on a, on a necklace. Like that's, that's ridiculous. And I was like, yeah, actually, it does, it does kind of sound ridiculous, but try it. You know, like yeah. just try. And that's why we offer, you know, free returns. And the and the responses came in of like, whoa, actually, I this is really cool. People are asking me about it. It's my meditational tool. I use it three, four, five times a day. It helps me fall asleep at night. It helps me with my morning routine. It helps me with, you know, pre-Zoom, uh, you know, pre-meeting jitters, like to calm you down. Yeah. And it looks cool. So it's like, so we're like, wait, wait a second. We keep getting these five-star reviews and the reviews were kind of all over the place with situational use. Like some people were using it, uh, athletes were using it. Then there was like people that are, uh, you know, like students in college using it before tests. And then we had vapors and smokers using it to quit smoking because of the oral fixation and the, you know, and the breathing break. It turns from a smoke break into a breathing break and, you know, working professionals, moms going through labor, like every every adhd uh trauma like you name it breath touches it and while we didn't design it for anything other than meditation and anxiety it turns out that now we're getting into longevity right you only have like actually we just started talking about this you only have x amount of heartbeats right and then you die so because of that if you can slow your breath to slow your heart rate well, then aren't we able to live longer because we're breathing slower? And then we basically have, you know, going into heart disease, like it's still the number one killer. 
if stress is linked to, which it is, if stress is linked to hypertension, which is inflammation really that causes heart attacks and, and heart failure, then why are we talking about breathing? You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's like right there, right under your nose. And a lot of people just aren't aware of how powerful it is. So that's why we love what the necklace does for people. Yeah, no, the shift is very, very different from just breathing on your own. It's not just the, 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 the a reminder, but also the mechanics, right? The, the, it's almost like they always say breathe into a bag when you're panicking, you know, the, that closed, enclosed in, in space. It actually came because like my, so my wife used it when she was in labor and she had learned all these Le Mans techniques. And when push came to shove with these contractions, she's like, I need that thing. Give me that tool because when stress comes, look, it's not an accident. Your prefrontal cortex shuts down because of the cortisol release. And that's good if you're being attacked by a grizzly right. bear, right? Because you got to fight or flight. But it's not good when you're trying to focus or sleep or eat or just kind of relax and, you know, be normal and live like you're supposed to live. So when you're trying to make kind of like tough decisions or any decision and you're stressed or you're on any, any sort of... Uh, basically a spectrum of anxiety you're you're living in and out of fight or flight all day and the tool is physical so it makes you breathe slow and it has that gentle reminder because it's hanging around your neck to do it and it's like a lot of people initially were like well okay cool now that i know this breathing technique i'm going to use it and i always say back like okay awesome but tell me tell me tomorrow how many times yeah. you <laughs> use that yeah, technique cool. and they yeah. come back and they're like yeah you're right i forgot get because again breathing's offline so it's like you have this tool and whether or not you use a necklace or not if you can breathe slower you will feel better because of the physiology and neurology working in your body to help you yeah and i concur and how with kids as well let's talk about how it is helped kids with anxiety um even stress um these days um how what makes it appealing to them yeah, so that gets personal for us, right? Like I have two kids and while they're really young, uh, we've had so many requests. This is just kind of endemic of, you know, what's going on right now with society and, and, and tech and shootings. And there's all these things that we have to live with that I didn't grow up with, social media. Like, yeah. so we're finding parents are reaching out saying, hey, my seven-year-old, my eight-year-old, my 10-year-old is stressed, is anxious, and it's real. And whether or not these kids have some sort of, <clears throat> you know, like, emotional dysregulation they're dealing with stress that we didn't have to deal with and so we say look like we're gonna we're gonna it's a simple tool we didn't even think of kids when we were building this but we have a new version now that has an adjustable cord that's more of like an accessory versus a necklace and they're actually learning how to self-regulate yeah. early which like everyone out there imagine if you were able to learn a technique that's totally natural when you were a kid you know, like when I was a kid, I was just, I was that nervous kid. I was, I had stomach problems. I, I just, I was always worrying about something, whether it's a yeah. spelling test or, you know, what am I going to do at recess? Who am I going to sit with at lunch? And it's like. Mm -hmm. Adolescence. Your, yeah. yeah. Just like the what do they like me? Yeah. All that nonsense. Yeah. It's like, wild, go. right? So it's like, you know, when, when do you start feeling stressed early? Like our brains are developing. So, yeah. So that's where we're, like the feedback has come in great of like, wow, like, I kid actually has just started to, because he's using this, they respect how they breathe. They're paying more attention to it. And man, when that becomes a habit at such a young age, you're going to carry it with you your whole life. So it's cool to know that we're affecting, you know, future generations with just a, a simple breathing tool. Yeah. Starting at a young age, it's necessary because uh, as anxiety um, grows and kids just feel overwhelmed, this could be the the tool to, to get them there. And, I can imagine, um, especially with kids, with um, a tool, it's it's just a great habit to develop super early, um, to make it to make life a lot easier. Let's talk about the then the things that you do in the morning routine aspect for you. I know this is piece of it. How do you get up, dress up, and show up? What are some other stuff you do? Yeah, so it's it's pretty simple. Like I uh, actually, I just started to change my routine because I needed, I have young kids that are, we wake up into stress. <laughs> so it's like anybody with young kids out there, there is uh, crying, complaining, uh, running, it just <laughs> every day. And it's just how it is. So I started waking up earlier now so that I can, I mean, anytime you can wake up into stillness, into quiet or birds chirping, I highly encourage that. I know you preach that as well. And I wake up, I stretch, I go to the gym, I come back, I have my protein shake, my wife's taking care of getting the kids ready. And then 
uh, or I, I missed one major step. I wake up and I breathe, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's actually, I do two things at once. I'm breathing and stretching because it's a great way to actually get more out of your stretch. And again, I'm not checking my phone first thing because I know that that's going to hurt me. So I'm actually feeling pretty good on the way to the gym. And when I come back, I know I've done something. So it's like that, that, that the first thing you do in the morning is going to affect your day from there forward, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's this wonderful book about making your bed first thing in the morning, <laughs> that one check that you, you know, check the box and then you can keep, you know, keep going with your tasks. So I get home and then protein shake with, you know, healthy protein shake. And then it's off to school, dropping the kids off with music conversation. Like I try to keep my mornings as light as possible. And then I get home and I kind of start to, you know, uh, to start to ease into work because I, I'm always, it never fails. I'm always met with one message, whether it's an email, a notification or a text, that's, that's stress. And it's like, mm-hmm. ouch, okay, I got to fix this. So it, I know it's waiting for me. I'm not in a rush to get there. So if you can practice being patient with that message and knowing that it's, it's not, you know, there's no forest fire, like you're going to get to it. And you can meet it with peace of mind. You're going to, you're, again, your prefrontal cortex is going to be in a better position to handle that situation much more effectively versus if you were, you know, in a, in a fight or flight state of mode where you're going to be reactive. So, uh, so I'm definitely not perfect. I definitely have to improve my, uh, the consistency of my morning routine, but going in the right direction. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what happens if you don't, do these things right is your energy level different how do you show up different like i'm sure that email now gets under your skin more than it would have on a day where you prepare yourself because the beauty especially with working out as well and breathing is you're prepared for whatever comes your way it it, it equips you to better show up so what happens when you don't do these things let me let me stress i'm not perfect because that happens and it happens frequently where, where i catch myself and it's like whoa what, what, like you, we need to get better at feeling what we're feeling. You know, the awareness side of it is, is, is maybe even more important than the breathing side. Cause if you can become more aware of what you're feeling and not just three emotions of happy, sad, or, or, or angry, you're able to understand that there's a nuanced way of feeling. It's like, whoa, if you get better at it, it's like, you can track it down. Like, oh, I'm, I didn't do my breathing routine this morning. And then I got that text and you kind of track it down like a, like a detective of like, that's what it was. It was that notification that got me or that random thought, that rogue thought that got me. And then you crack open your laptop and you get that first message. And now you're kind of in a hole, right? Because you, got, you have to dig your way out. <clears throat> and one thing that I'll, I'll say, which is very important is be careful of screens because there's something called tech apnea, which is where your brain reactively Free, not freezes, but it sends a signal to your breath when you see a screen, whether it's your phone or your laptop, that you kind of stop breathing or you hold your breath for a little bit or you or you kind of like breathe erratically. And it's because the brain is anticipating danger, right? Your amygdala and the brain stem is sensing something, right? It's always active. It's like, what's what do we need to worry about next, yeah. right? So it's fishing for that one thing. And because of that, it sends a signal to your breath saying like, okay, all systems alarm, even though you're not even thinking this, it's happening. So now your heart's beating a little faster, your muscles get a little tense and your shoulders, you know, kind of start to rise up, tongue on the roof of your mouth. Uh, Maybe you start sweating a little bit. These are all things you're not even aware of. And then you get hit with that message. You're not breathing right. So it's like, now you're probably not going to make, you're not in the position, you know, to make the best choice. So it's like, so what I do is, because that happens to me almost daily where I catch myself. It's like, wait, stop, pull back. Walk away from the computer, walk away from the phone. And that's it. If I just go outside and get some fresh air for like a minute on a breathing break, I can reset. And that's where I come back and it's like, all right, now I'm looking at this message from a much different perspective and I don't feel so bad about it anymore. And I know that's not game changing as a single event, but when you start to accumulate these experiences over time, you're going to be making compound interest. Meaning you're gonna, you know, form those new neural pathways in your brain. I know you've talked about neuroscience before with mm-hmm. the neuroplasticity. Like you are now teaching your brain to do X instead of Y. So now you're gonna feel like, hey, maybe I should breathe right now. Maybe I should go outside for a breath break instead of trying to kind of like push through. Yeah. Sometimes pushing through is like <laughs> you're not really helping yourself. You're just like exacerbating the problem. So, uh, so yes, I'm guilty of it, but. I am always working better on uh, on building a better breathing habit. 
Yeah, and it's it's almost like taking a power nap, right? If you don't have the luxury of napping in the middle of the day, but you do have, you can breathe. You, breathe, you know, it's easier, it's accessible, and you can actually get the benefits as if you did get a power nap. You are ready to take on the second half of the day or to take care of what that situation is. Yeah, and I know you have a lot of uh, you know business people, entrepreneurs on the, on the on the podcast here and listening. There's studies that show that, you know, we have 40% more anxiety and stress than the normal, I guess, job, whatever that is, the nine to five. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a lot more to worry about. So people be aware of that. You're fielding more stress. You're, there, there's more weight on your shoulders. And what that means is you have to work harder to release that stress. You know, where is that valve for you? And if it's an unhealthy valve, if it's, if it requires alcohol or drugs or an unhealthy habit, vaping, whatever it is, or junk food or scrolling, like we all have these habits, right? Mm -hmm. Take a look at it, test breathing, just give it a shot for like 48 hours, try to breathe consciously, five in, five out, five in through your nose, five out, I promise you you're gonna feel better because of that. And if you need something physical, this necklace is here to actually help you make it a habit. Yeah, those habits are designed to solve a problem for you, whether it's anxiety, whether it's stress, as you said, whether, it's overwhelming. You have those habits of scrolling, the habits of drinking, all, all those are bad habits, but the brain created it to solve that particular um, problem, stressor for you. Now, this would be a good habit to replace, right? Because you can't break a habit without putting a new one in place. This would be one to, to consider replacing those um, bad habits with uh, to, to set you up for yeah. success long-term. <laughs> so. Uh, Todd, tell us, where can we find you? Where can we connect with you and find the necklace? Yeah, thank you. So the website is comusodesign.com and that's just K-O-M-U-S-O design.com or just Google the shift. That's what the uh, the device is called. And, you know, we offer 30 day free returns just so you can believe it. If it doesn't work for you, please send it back and you a full refund. We'll pay for shipping. This is something that we're passionate about because we know that once you start using it, you kind of get hooked on it in the best possible way. And just think about it, you're, if you're in the car right now on your commute, you know, like you're probably not breathing, right? So it's like, what if you just took a few deep breaths right now and then like five in, five out, do that three times in a row and then ask yourself how you feel. And then once you do that, ask yourself if you could feel like this more often, wouldn't you want that? And that's why we made the necklace. It's physical. It tethers you to that commitment. And it's a way to actually live more mindfully because you're breathing consciously. So uh, I really appreciate you uh, you giving me some time to talk today about something that I'm really passionate about and being able to connect with all of your listeners. And uh, I'm grateful. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We are all about finding your purpose and living your purpose. And you you out of a what necessity, you found a solution and bring it out to the world, but you're living the purpose, right? You feel like you're adding value and helping people, you know, kids, the new generation, he said, um, grow up a little less stressful, less anxiety, and imagine what can be done with that extra energy and extra time, right? People then will live, begin to live in their own purpose, find out what they're really, what their big potential is. And that purpose can only really be found, right? If you're in a good state of mind, if you're able to tap into your intuition. So, you know, once you have or find any purpose, you're able to sleep better at night because of that. So, uh, so likewise to you, you're, you're definitely serving the, your community well, and it's just, that's awesome to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Todd, we love quotes here at BMR. Go ahead and leave us with your favorite. All right. Mine is, and it, maybe it sounds <laughs> silly because it's a financial quote, but the flood lifts all boats and it's related to breath, no surprise, in that when you breathe better, everything gets better. The way you feel, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your health, your relationships, your focus, your creativity, it all gets better because you're doing one simple thing. So I'll leave you with that. <laughs> Powerful. The, the, the Repeat it. The flood lifts all boats. And it's really, it's financial because it says that, you know, when the, when the economy is good, you know, everybody's doing better. Stocks are up, businesses are better, oh, empl unemployment's low. But I relate it to breath and that, you know, breath overlaps with so much of your life, you know, because people, like I said, going back to the reviews, they tell us that they're sleeping better. They're feeling better. They're talking better. Their, their, their scores are improving and their tests, like performance with athletes is like, Hey, kind of like this universal thing. So, uh, so hopefully that helps people understand what it does. 
Yeah, I really dig it. I like that quite a bit. Thank you for sharing, Todd. It's been an honor having you on the show. Yeah, you've been awesome. Thanks so much. Perfect. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.